So with new potentiometers mounted, let's look a little bit on how nice and fine it is. So this is the input level potentiometer, and we can now see the two outputs. See, it goes up and down, fine, fantastic. But what happens when I turn the input down to, ooh, down to zero? It goes absolutely unstable, crappity crap. And why is this happening when I go and short the input? So here is the input stage seen from the bottom. And this coax right there is coming directly from the input potentiometer. And look at that. It goes directly to pin 7 on this triode, the ECC85. So here is the schematic. I completely redrawn everything directly from the previous picture. So here is the coax cable. And see the signal comes directly from a potentiometer, and by the way, the potentiometer is 100K. Oh, sorry, I forgot to write that one. So, input signal, and then, see, the impedance to this grid is very much dependent on where is the slider on the potentiometer. So, if I put this slider in the middle, I have, of course, the highest impedance, right? And in this case, I measure here on the cathode, 1.341 volts. But if I put the slider all the way to the ground, I measure a little bit different, not that much, but I measure a different DC voltage here. And this difference here also changes the anode voltage from 81.5 to 86.8. .8. So there's a different DC behavior here dependent on where is the slider. And this is something we don't like because we take this signal here via a decoupling capacitor to a, another grid of the output driver triode. So here's the output. There's a little bit of feedback and all that's not super important. And the, of course the capacitor is rather high for the next stages because this unit needs to go uh, down to a very low frequency. But there's another fault, uh, actually, but this, this is a hardware fault, not a design fault, but there's actually many errors in this one at the moment. But look at that. I measure at this point a very, very little, but there is a DC voltage change on this point. Again, dependent on where my slider is. So how is that possible? The only way this is possible is due to leakage in this capacitor because a voltage change here will leak something in here and change the output here. It's, of course, tiny, tiny little itsy-bitsy, but it is still visible.